So welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSE English with an Academy. And my name is Vijay Kumar. If you want to know about me, like I have five years of teaching experience for civil services. Along with that, I have appeared for civil services interview twice and I have written my mains examination more than a couple of times. So despite of being failure in this examination, I have gained huge amount of knowledge. And since the last five years, I have been guiding the students who want to become civil servants and I have made uh, them to crack the civil services using geography as optional. So in the same regard, I'll be helping you up in prelims, mains, as well as in the interview stages on this Let's Crack UPSC CSE English with an Academy. And today's topic which we are going to discuss that is Great Plains. Do remember this most most important physiographic division of India. Hence, uh, we will try to understand the Great Plains and different perspective. So let's crack UPSC CSE English with an Academy. So crack UPSC CSE with India's largest learning platform. So how to crack UPSC CSE with India's largest learning platform? It is you have to get the subscription done. How to get the subscription done? Just open your Play Store and uh, drop an Academy Learning app and just install it. And once you install, you will be redirected towards the home page. And once you are redirected towards the home page, you can see the goal over there and choose your goal as UPSC CSE. Then click on continue button. You will be getting the subscription please. Um, when you get the subscription page, so try to get the subscription done. I'll just show you what are the subscription prices. But before I show you about the subscription prices, uh, let me show you what are the things which you are going to get when you would be uh, getting the subscription. So once you get the subscription, let's assume you have got the subscription for 12 months. So in that you would be getting just one minute. <clears throat> In that uh, like you will be getting daily live classes on this particular platform along with that live test and quizzes like live classes are not like one way communication which happens on let's crack UPSC CSE English channel. They are two way communication do remember this point like uh, during the live classes you can chat with the educator you can engage in the discussions you can ask your doubts and you can attend the answer polls all these happen while the classes are going on clear so apart from this like if you see you would be finding live test and quizzes like uh, where through which you can evaluate your preparation so that you can accelerate your preparation or maintain the consistency which is required for this civil services clear and apart from that you will be finding structured courses like uh, for example there would be no random courses available so let me say you uh, for example like if i am dealing polity for you on an academy platform so i'll prepare a course structure page for the next upcoming two months and daily i'll be coming up live on the platform dealing the polity aspect which is present in your gs paper too so in this way designed structured courses are prepared by the top educators of the country and they would be making you learn all the things which are required for your polity exam that uh, the polity syllabus which is present in your gs paper too and the fourth important aspect which you have to remember is you will be getting unlimited access like for example let's say you have missed the live lecture today so you can aram say you can come and watch uh, these live lectures you can you can come and watch these lectures in a recorded way like you will be having the availability of recorded videos this is one major thing and you can watch this recorded video n number of times this is the most most important point which you have to remember clear so like you can see some of the top educators of the country like we have more than 90 educators who deal this UPSC CSE category and you can see some of them who are already well known faculty well known educators in the country like under their guidance you are going to crack civil services on an academy platform. And there is a separate column called a special classes. Once you install the app, just go and watch special classes so that you will understand how actually classes run on the platform done so with that you can easily score good marks like uh, with these special classes you can attain some of the major current issues like or economic surveys or budget and all once if you watch the special classes these are made only for you to know how the classes would be running on the platform so please come and watch these special classes on the platform so that you will understand very perfectly how these classes would be running clear and apart from that, you will can also see the upcoming courses which are going to happen on the platform, which will make you sure that uh, to plan your preparation accordingly. 
and see these are the subscription prices per one month it is 8000 three month 20 and six month 32 and 12 month 40 and the 10 percent discount which is available for you here you have to use the use this code to get the 10 percent discount on this platform see to get attain the 10 percent discount you have to use the code called as vk10 so better i suggest aspirants to go for 12 month or 24 month course why because this exam itself um, this exam requires at least one year of preparation and the exam course structure if you see uh, the prelims mains and then results and then personality test and then final results it will take one more 12 months so entirely it is a long due of process so hence you have to be with an academy for the longer duration for that you have to get the subscription for longer duration with very lower cost clear so you try to see this particular code do remember this code while you get the subscription clear so let's start up with the lecture the great plains of india the most most important physiographic division which you have so when the indian plate was uh, when the indian plate has hit the eurasian plate then we had formation of himalayas done so when indian plate has struck the himalaya uh, eurasian plate you can see this like greater himalayas were formed and then himachal that is lesser himalayas were formed and then shivaliks uh, that is outer himalayas were formed and just accordingly adjacent with that we had formation of a synclinal structure so everyone know that the bottom most portion is called a syncline and the topmost portion is anticline so himalayas can be considered as anticlines and this depression which you can see here this can be called as synclinal structure so with the hitting of eurasian plate we had formation of we had formation of a synclinal structure at the border of this Shivalik range and this synclinal structure which is present in this synclinal structure the deposition happened and the great Indo-Gangetic plains are created got this point see first Himalayas were formed peninsular plateau was the most oldest physiographic division in India so this peninsular plateau was formed before the Indian plate has hit the Eurasian plate so keeping that peninsular plateau aside if you see this india indo gangetic plain and if you see this greater himalayas lesser himalayas shivaliks these were the most recent formed clear when indian plate has struck himalayas were formed and then the rivers which started sprouting out from himalayas they have eroded so they have involved in two processes in the initial stages of erosion we had two stages of erosion one is initial stage and one is lateral stage so in the initial stages these rivers when they are coming out from the himalayas ranges they have deep down cutted so we had the vertical cutting of that mountain range and we had formation of valley like structures and due to this vertical cutting huge number of conglomerates what are conglomerates they are combination of huge boulder like structures silt sedimental structures clay so combination of all these things they are called as conglomerates and these conglomerates they have traveled along with the river course and river one hit once it has entered this great depression which you can see here this is called as great depression once the river has reached this great depression the river started depositing the sediments in a layered manner hence as the layered manner surface has been generated a lowland topography has been created which is called as plain so great plains of india or simply we can call it as indo-gangetic plain these are formed from the deposition which is made by different rivers which has started coming out from himalayas got this point everyone clear with this clear so and hence it is also true that the rivers which have come out from himalayas they have deposited and formed this indo-gangetic plain and why it is called as indo-gangetic plain just we can call it as great plains right so it is called as indo-gangetic plain because most of this plain formation was under the ganga river and its tributaries so the ganga river along with its tributary has created this particular region hence 
a nickname has been given to the great plains of india that is indo gangetic plain please try to remember this point most most important point for you and in the later sections some of the rivers of peninsular plateau like betwa kane chambal sindh uh, son river and its tributaries damodar river and its tributaries so some of the peninsular rivers which drain into the ganga river basin they also contributed for the extension of this plain hence this indo gangetic plain has been created and this indo gangetic plain is the largest one around the world and this indo gangetic plain as it has the deposition it would be having huge amount of alluvium associated with it hence it has this indo gangetic plain which is present it has world's largest alluvial tract do remember this point the indo gangetic plain which is present it has the world's largest alluvial tract i'll show you the factual information within very soon in the next slides clear any doubts in this so there was a depression and when himalayas were formed glaciers were created and with the melting of glaciers rivers started coming out and those rivers which started coming out down the slope in the initial stages of erosion we had down cutting that is vertical cutting and we also had the lateral erosion with that we had combination of deposition of conglomerates in this particular synclinal structure resulting into formation of indo gangetic plain and it is also so true that in the lateral erosions also we had deposition of this plain structures and also the peninsular plateau has also contributed for the extension of this indo gangetic plain clear so if you see the entire uh, shaded region in this margin this entire region would be called as great plains of india and pakistan is also involved it but later on pakistan when it was divided there is no necessary of reading that but if you see the entire belt of this plain region the world's largest belt on the western margin it is covered by suleiman and kirtar ranges and in the northern side it is covered by himalayas and on the southern side it is covered by peninsular plateau and on the eastern side it is covered by purvanchals so this particular plain as a physiographic division is entirely covered by huge elevated regions please please do remember that clear so as i have said about the formation of this indo gangetic plain so during the initial stages of upliftment of sediments the already existing rivers changed their course several times and they were rejuvenated each time it means they have changed their direction and this rejuvenation is associated with intense vertical cutting and headward cutting so what is headward cutting headward cutting is nothing but from the place of origin of river river origin moves somewhat backward instead of moving further so because of upliftment of himalayas there was headward erosion so because of headward erosion the length of the river channel got increased hence more and more sediments were joined and this great plains were deposited do remember this point clear so the headward erosion and vertical erosion of the river valley in the initial stages do remember the headward erosion and the vertical erosion of river valley in the initial stages and lateral erosion in the later stages contributed a huge amount of conglomerates which are combination of rock debris which are combination of small silt like structures and which are combination of clay which were carried down the slope and they were deposited at the synclinal structure and hence we had formation of this great plains of india do remember see do remember the definition of headward erosion there are chances that this definition might be directly asked in your upsc prelims like uh, what are the consequences associated with the headward erosion or which of the following definitions best suit headward erosion so such kind of questions might be formed in your preliminary examination so please please try to remember them as much as you can so if you see the headward erosion the erosion at the origin of a stream channel which causes the origin to move back away from the direction of the stream flow and so causes the stream channel to lengthen that is called as headward erosion do remember this point clear so if you see these conglomerates which came out were deposited in the depression that depression was generally the depression is a general term 
but the geographical term if you see it is called as indogangetic trough or it is called as indogangetic syncline so the base of the syncline was having hard crystalline rocks and on that hard crystalline rocks these conglomerates have been deposited between the peninsular india and between the convergent plate boundary which have been developed so new rivers which were created and more alluvium which was deposited in this way what generally happened is the raising of himalayas on and often clear so in the initial stages in the later stages what has happened is the himalayas started continuously raising so with the raising of himalayas the glaciers were formed and with the melting of glaciers new rivers were accumulated and volume of rivers have been increased and more and more alluvium deposition has happened and hence the deposition has resulted into complete loss of depression so now we won't see any kind of depression over there it is continuously completely it's a plain topography which is associated with it so this particular depression or indogangetic trough or indogangetic geosyncline can be associated itself with the tetis sea which is present do remember this point more more important clear if you see as i have already said upper peninsula rivers have also contributed the, to the formation of plains but to a very limited extent like 90 percent contribution comes from the himalayan rivers and only 10 percent contribution comes from the upper peninsula rivers like you can see the chambal river you can see the betwa kain sindh son damodar all these rivers are considered as upper peninsula rivers which also have the contributions towards the formation of this particular plains clear so if you see during the recent times depositional work of three major river system that is indus ganga and brahmaputra was predominant during the recent few million years ago clear so if you check out the features so you will find many characteristics of features of this particular great plains if you see Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra plain is the world's largest alluvial tract as I have already mentioned about this one. So it extends and it is the world's largest alluvial tract which is associated with it. And if you see it stretches right away about 3200 kilometers from the mouth of Indus to the mouth of Ganga. So the deltaic regions of Indus and Ganga which are present in between this we have an arcuate shaped structure of this gangetic plane that is called as indo-gangetic plane clear and in this 3000 kilometers extension indian plane accounts for 2400 kilometer clear and if you see the northern boundary is well marked by shivaliks as i have said himalayas and the southern boundary we have a very irregular line of the northern edge of peninsular india and on western borders they are we have suleiman and kirtar ranges of pakistan clear and if you see on the eastern margin as i've already said we had the purvanchal's geographical location so this is also most important point this plane if you see it is more wider in the west where it stretches for about 500 kilometer but the width of this indogangetic plane it slowly starts decreasing towards the east clear and if you see the thickness of alluvium deposit which are present just one minute and uh, if you see the thickness of the alluvium deposit also varies from place to place do remember these points clear so if you want to divide the indo-gangetic plains on the basis of its formation on the basis of its characteristics on the basis of its north to south division we can divide them as babar belt terai belt bangar belt khadar belt do remember this point clear so the first northernmost belt of this indo-gangetic plane if you see in this figure clear so here you have the babar belt next comes terai belt next bangar belt and next khadar belt so khadar is the southern one and the babar is the northern belt which we have and if you see this babar belt 
so this barber belt has it is very narrower in nature it is formed along the foot hills of the shivalik ranges do remember this point so this barber belt is narrower formed at the foot hills of the shivaliks and they have high porosity associated with it along with that it has the northernmost stretch it is considered as the northernmost stretch of indo gangetic plain and if you see it runs about 8 to 16 kilometers wide running in an east west direction along the foothill of the shivaliks so you can see this barber belt at the foothills of the shivaliks and these barber belts they show a remarkable continuity from the indus to the tista river if you see the indus river if you see the tista river so right away starting from the indus river basin until the tista river system you will see a continuous movement of this barber belt do remember this point the most most important point apart from this the rivers descending from the himalayas deposit their load along the foothills in the form of alluvial fans see in general how the barber belt is formed and as i have said how it is uh, must much porous in nature simply when the rivers started coming down the slope and when the rivers started entering into the plain region river loses its transportational capacity because river loses its slope gradient river loses its transportational capacity hence the river would tend to deposit huge boulder like structures at the foot of shivalik ranges so at that margins huge boulder like structures in the form of either alluvial cones or in the form of alluvial fan like structures are deposited it would be the first depositional feature of the river so river would be creating huge amount of erosional and depositional landforms in that the first depositional landform which would be created by the river it is alluvial fan and cone so if we have more sediments and less water then a cone like structure would be developed if we have more water uh less sediments then a spreaded fan like structure would be developed please do remember these points clear so these alluvial fans have merged together to build up the barber belt so as i have said the porosity of the barber belt is most unique feature as we have huge number of pebbles and rock debris like structures we have formation of this alluvial fans hence because of huge amount of sediments which have pebbles and rock debris the stream when it enters this region of either alluvial fans and cones the streams generally tend to disappear so within the barber belt streams disappear and these streams once they disappear entering the barber belt will be reemerging in the next belt so called terai belt got this point so in this regard when the streams disappear in this margin uh, we would find completely dry river courses so we don't find any kind of wet river basins so entire river course which is present that would be in a dry uh, dry nature like except in the rainy seasons we observe entire uh, river course within the barber belt in a dry nature clear so barber belt is comparatively narrower in the east and extensive in the west that is common clear and the next belt which we have that is terai belt so terai belt is nothing but to the south of babar belt the belt which has been extended that is called as terai belt simply after the deposition of huge boulder like structures the river tends to drop down its minute sediments which are there and these minute sediments which are there they tend to create marshy lands because minute sediments generally they saturate in the water they suspend in the water hence what happens is the river which got disappeared in the barber belt because of minute nature of sediments which are present in this region the river tends to reemerge hence when the river tends to reemerge the river it will mix up with the silt which is present over there and hence it would uh, it doesn't have a good drainage like structure so hence terai belt if you observe it would be ill drained in nature and because of this ill draining we would be having marshy lands which are generated and these marshy lands which are generated they will have huge amount of thick forestry associated with it clear so the thick forestry which is present that thick forestry uh, which uh, has this narrow track to the south of babar running parallel to it so we won't find any kind of agriculture development in this particular terai region we generally have forestry if you see the terai 
is about somewhere around 15 to 30 kilometer wide and the underground streams of barber belt which has uh, disappeared that tends to re-emerge in this belt clear if you see the thickly forested region provides shelter to variety of wildlife like entire this terai belt uh, we would find some national parks associated with it like jim corbett national park which is present in uttarakhand kaziranga national park present in assam are the best fitted in the terai region of this great plains of india so if you see like uh, the terai is more marked in the eastern part than in the west <laughs> clear so because eastern part receives comparatively higher amount of rainfall uh, the eastern part of india receives actually higher amount of rainfall comparatively so hence the terai belts are mostly extended in the east when comparatively to that of west and this terai soils they are silty and they are rich in nitrogen and organic matter but they are deficit in phosphate do remember this there are chances that they might ask you this question like they might give you a statements associated with this clear so most of the terai land especially in punjab uttar pradesh and uttarakhand has been turned into agricultural land so since the post green revolution era this terai belt has witnessed agriculture but naturally this terai belt is not suitable for agriculture it is mostly dominated with the forestry clear so hence the punjab uttar uttar pradesh and uttarakhand in these regions this terai belt have been converted into agricultural lands which gives good amount of crops like that of sugarcane rice and wheat and the next belt which is present that is bangar belt so in general whenever the river down cuts itself so for example if you have a river basin at certain sea level so if a river tends to deposit its sediments on its bank creating the flood plains but if river has been down cutted so the river will leave out the flood plains which it has deposited earlier now what river does is it creates new flood plains at lower level of erosion so hence the older flood plains would be left off so in this gangetic plain belt the left out flood plains which are present the older flood plains which are present they are considered as bangar belt so bangar is older alluvium associated along the river beds forming terraces so these bangar belt they create terraces like structures and these terraces are often impregnated with calcareous concentrations it is nothing but more amount of kankar so because of more amount of kankar associated with this these are not highly suitable for agriculture they are suitable but they are not on and often fed up with the fresh sediments hence kankar would be developed hence the productivity levels of the agriculture are very low in this bangar belt but bangar belt has huge amount of fossils associated with it you can see the rhinoceros hippopotamus and the elephants the fossils of these animals can be observed in this particular bangar belt clear so soil is of more uh, clay composition and is dark generally dark in color clear so the next belt which is present that is khadar belt so as the river started depositing its sediments in the newer area this particular river which has created the sediments in the newer area that is called as khadar belt the khadar is composed of newer alluvium and forms the flood plains along the river banks clear so it is the newer uh, flood plain which has been created and newer layer of alluvium is deposited by river flood almost every year hence they frames the most amount of fertile lands so these khadar belts wherever they are present they are the fertile soils of the ganga plain so we have the sandy clays and loam and rare and more leached and less calcareous concentrations are present hence they have huge productivity and they are very fertile in nature see these are north south division but you can generalize the south uh, like the regional divisions like you can see the sindh plain in and around pakistan region rajasthan plain which is included with uh, thar desert uh, which is included with uh, semi arid plains which are included with grasslands called as rajasthan bagar clear so whenever you come across with these kind of keywords please try to match them and in the punjab region they are called as punjab plain or punjab haryana plain instead and if you could see this punjab haryana plain they are known for huge amount of doabs so doab is nothing but land between two rivers which is most fertile and in the punjab region you can experience these kind of doab like structures apart from this like you can see the ganga plain which has been deposited by ganga and its tributaries so the most important and the largest regional division of the entire great plains 
and brahmaputra plain which is deposited by brahmaputra and its tributaries in and around assam belt and ganga brahmaputra delta which is present in between the west bengal and bangladesh region so all these are regional divisions no need to concentrate much on this but there are chances if question comes in mains like explain the significance of great plains then there should be a presence of this regional divisions as well clear hence thank you for watching this lesson and if you want the continuous notifications please click on the bell icon and please do subscribe to let's crack upsc csc english channel for more and more updates please click on the bell icon so we will be helping you in every aspect of your preparation please try to subscribe to the unacademy channel by installing the app and getting the subscription done so before you get the subscription use this code called as vk10 so that you would be getting more and more uh knowledgeable aspects where entire syllabus of your upsc csc preparation would be covered please like this video and do share it as much as it can so that it can reach every part of the country thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day jai hind